Welcome to Tactical Talk. This is Zain Khan. Today, the topic of our show is the relationship between three countries, Pakistan, Turkey, and Iran. What are their future endeavors and future projects? To discuss this topic, we have with us today Dr. Akhtar Babuna, a Turkish journalist and also a neuroscientist. Welcome to our show, Dr. Akhtar Babuna. This is Zain Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. I am very pleased and honored to be with you. And my salam to entire Pakistani nation. Dr. Akshay Babuna, let's get to the first question. What is the history between these three countries, Pakistan, Turkey, and Iran? And also, can you shed some light on the RCD? What was it? Well, uh, our relationship with the Pakistan and Iran and Turkey goes back many, many uh, decades and even uh, hundreds of years. Uh, let's uh, first of all, uh, our relationship with the Iran and Turkey and goes back to the uh, time of the August migration. And since that time, many Turks has been settled in Iran, actually. And uh, Turks are uh, the largest uh, population after Iranians in, in Iran. And Turkish is the second language. And our border, 570 kilometers border uh, with Iran, has been drawn in uh, 1639 with the Castro Shirin uh, Treaty. And this has been never changed by the imperialist powers between Iran and Turkey. And we are blessed to have a Muslim country like Iran uh, as a border country and as a brother country with Turkey. So we have, uh, and of course there has been some conflicts between the Ottomans and Iranians, but th these, these were in the major conflicts. And we have been in very good relation since a very long time, since centuries and with the Iran actually. And so uh, this is, of, of course, uh, with the Central Agreement, which is a uh, central treaty organization, which was uh, signed also. Pakistan was involved in that also, Iran, Turkey, and some other countries, has been, uh, which was signed in 1955, has been uh, for economically and soci uh, socially, and diplomatically, we had very good relation with Iran and Turkey. Now, uh, if you go back to uh, Pakistan, Pakistan is, as you know, the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. And uh, this is the 70th independence, uh, year of independence of the Pakistan. Pakistan, of course, we would never forget that, has been major supporter of Turkey uh, at the time of Turkish War of Independence, or we can say War of Liberation, has major supporter of Turkey. We would never forget that. This is a, our brother country, has been a major supporter, and also uh, has been a supporter in the Cyprus issue, has been a supporter, of course, in the Fethullah Gülen terror organization, FETO issue also. This is our brother country, and we have been a very good in very good relationship, and of course, since the independence of uh, 70 years ago, since the independence of uh, Pakistan, and very good diplomatic relations also, and that was confirmed with the CENTO, Central Treaty Organization, also. Well, uh, Cent, uh, CENTO, the Central Treaty Organization, which was led by uh, a United, uh, it's an American-led uh, treaty organization, and with the re regional members, uh, with the regional members of the CENTO, uh, the regional cooperation for development that you mentioned uh, right now, a little while ago, RCD was set up by the regional members of the central organization, Iran, Turkey, and the pa Pakistan. That was uh, signed in, in, in July 1964. However, it hasn't uh, strengthened, their socio strengthened the socio-economic development. However, it was not successful, and it developed into a different organization, an economic uh, cooperation, uh, cooperative organization. Anyway, uh, this regional cooperation, RCD, was uh, which uh, was signed in 1964, could only last to 1985. But again, we have a very beautiful brotherly relationship with Turkey, Iran, and the Pakistan. And President Erdogan and, uh, stated, uh, uh, made, it, made it uh, termed Pakistan home away home for Turkey, home away form for the Pakistan, President Erdogan's uh, term for the Pakistan. Pakistan is our brother country. Iranians are our brothers, and the administration, Iranian administration and the Turkish administration made statements 
uh, that we are both Muslim countries and they didn't refer to Shia or Sunni. Shia are also perfect Muslims, Sunni perfect Muslims, and we should have a very powerful uh, cooperation, Turkey, Iran, uh, and the Pakistan, militarily, socioeconomically, diplomatically. This would be a very, uh, this would be a big deterrence for uh, the foreign uh, threats also, since because uh, take the, uh, the, the Pakistan for example. Pakistan, Pakistan is uh, military-wise, uh, they're uh, the uh, uh, air pilots and military air uh, officer, uh, military uh, air officers are being train are uh, training in Turkey for the F-16 fleets, and uh, Pakistan is the unique in having nuclear power among the Muslim countries. Pakistan is the only Muslim country who has nuclear power. And of course, as you know, uh, Turkish army is very powerful. Iranian army is very powerful. So is the Pakistan. Pakistan has also nuclear power. So uh, military-wise, to have an alliance and very strong uh, relationship between Pakistan, Turkey, and Iran, is very crucial and vital to bring peace uh, into the Middle East to the entire world, actually. Uh, Dr. Akhtar Babuna, let's get to the second question. The RCD, as you said, uh, evolved into the ECO. What is the ECO and how many more countries have joined it? Well, uh, ECO is the Economic Co Cooperation Organization. After RCD was unsuccessful, uh, which was lasted only until 1964. In 1985, uh, another organization was established, which is ECO, as you stated, Economic Cooperation Organization, among Iran, Pakistan, and Turkey, which are regional members of, uh, which were regional members of the CENTO, Central uh, uh, Treaty Organization. So the purpose was to, to promote economic, technical, and cultural cooperation among the member states. So uh, ECO is, we can say, a successor organization uh, for regional cooperation for the development, RCD, uh, which was only remained until uh, from 64 to 79, actually. So that was established in 1985. So in 1992, uh, this organization expanded and included seven more uh, countries, actually, including Afghanistan, uh, Republic of Azerbaijan, joined also uh, uh, this organization, ECO, Republic of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Kyrgyz Republic, Turkmenistan, uh, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan. So seven more countries included in that, uh, besides Turkey, Iran, and pa Pakistan. So current members membership is uh, 10 countries. Uh, what projects come under the ECO, and what does it plan to do in the future? Well, uh, firstly, of course, uh, transportation is one of the areas is focused to underline the importance of the ECU. And also, uh, regional efforts are being made by ECO members uh, to en on improving trade and transportation, uh, which includes some other uh, organizations also. One of them is uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, uh, the uh, CPEC, Ch again, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is attractive for Turkey and Afghanistan also. And some other projects, North-South Transport Corridor or the Trans-Caspian Transportation Routes are also included in that. All these, uh, projects have the, uh, all these projects have the potential to function better in parallel with the wider and more comprehensive initiated, namely China's One Belt, One Road. So if you summarize overall, it is attractive economic uh, cooperation, which can include a wider uh, areas also economically. And the uh, Silk Road-like projects depends on their uh, also desire for cooperation and integration. And since seven members of this uh, organization, ECO, uh, seven of the ten members are landlocked, so very close by uh, countries. Uh, and so we can increase the mutual cooperation but overall, not only economic or socially, but militarily, we can increase our relationship and also include Russia. Russia is a major player because two of the uh, uh, countries uh, uh, also included uh, with, uh, for example, uh, the Russia-led Eurasia Economic Union, which are the Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, 
These are also players with Russia, Russia-led Eurasia Economic Union. So Russia should also be included in this relationship. We can find a middle way uh, with the e EU and this uh, ECO uh, organizations. And because, as, as I stated, two countries also are part of this EEU organization, which is Eurasia Economic Union. So, I mean, uh, of course, it makes very much sense to have a good relationship with these countries. As I stated, it's a seven uh, a landlocked countries. Seven of them are landlocked. And Russia is a major player. And with these cooperations, we can bring peace and prosperity and justice uh, to the region. Dr. Akhtar Babuna, what other projects have Pakistan, Turkey, and Iran uh, planned to do economically and, you know, trade-wise, trade routes? Well, gathering interest uh, from regional states, the China-Pakistan Economic uh, Corridor, which is CPEC, is becoming also a, a ray of hope for uh, cooperation between Iran, Turkey, and Afghanistan, who wish to collaborate with the, uh, Pakistan in, on this project and from many aspects. And also, another one is uh, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific, which is E. SCAPS CAP was first founded an, under the name of United Nations Economic Commission for Asia and Far East. And also another one is uh, the gas pi uh, pipeline project among Iran and Russia, but also uh, which is important for Turkey because this new gas pipeline, which is uh, organized by the Gazprom of Russia and the National Iranian Gas Company of Iran, uh, which goes from South Pars gas field to the Turkish border, which is also Turkey's part of this project also. So these are the projects and hopefully and will be in practice and bring prosperity to these countries economically, ma make them more powerful. But again, military-wise, economically and socially, uh, our brother countries, Iran, Pakistan and Turkey are uh, the core countries for all these projects and for the Islamic Union, but Russia should definitely be included in that also. Russia is a major play, a player in the region and involved in many of these projects, as I just let, uh, mentioned a little while ago. Okay, last question. Uh, what is the future between these three countries because of their uh, geographical uh, uh, you know, location? Uh, how do you think they can plan to improve their relationship? Well, it's a very good question. Now, uh, we can say Middle, ha Middle East has been always the target of uh, certain factions and foreign powers, deep states, because of its geopolitical significance and also rich underground, uh, underground sources, including Pakistan, Iran, uh, Turkey, Afghanistan, for example, also. So, but uh, again, uh, well, they, the Turkey, Iran are powerful countries, which are the last two targets of the, Brit, uh, the, of the deep states, foreign power, imperialist powers, to be destroyed because that, after that, it will be very easy to, uh, to destroy the other Islamic countries. Now, as we know uh, there are problems and conflicts in Syria. Syria is destroyed, Iraq is, uh, for example, is being destroyed. Afghanistan suffers from that. Also Egypt and entire Islamic world. Now we hear that the Muslims are being op oppressed in Arakan also. So what needs to be done is Turkey, Iran, and especially Pakistan, these three countries to come together, and this will be a major deterrent force for these foreign powers because it will be extremely powerful military uh, alliance these three countries and very good Muslims living in uh, Pakistan, in Iran and Turkey and we would again we would never forget uh, our brother country Pakistan's support for Turkey in the in, uh, war of independence uh, at the time of war independence against FETO organization for example FETO Lakulan terror organization or in the Cyprus issues so uh, what we can suggest that we can have a, a military pact these three countries that can also include Russia, and when this pact uh, should uh, we, we should sign a pact 
stating that any attack or threat any of these countries will be regarded an attack or threat to the other countries also, to other countries also. Again, this will be an extremely powerful military organization alliance, and including Russia also, we should include Russia also. And other Muslim countries will definitely join uh, this alliance. So uh, we can be uh, like a core organization in the, uh, which would, of course would go to an Islamic Union, which is the only solution for the Muslim countries because Allah in Quran, uh, Allah says in the Quran, hold fast to the rope of Allah, the rope of Allah is Quran, and do not separate, Allah says. If we get separated individually and separately, Turkey uh, will be very weak. Iran will be very big, Pakistan will be very big, all other, is, uh, other countries. However, alliance and brings power. This is logically, rationally, and also an order uh, from Allah uh, needs to be done. So, uh, again, which I stated at the beginning, uh, the Pakistan has an extremely uh, large military power because of the unique and only Muslim country who has nuclear power. Iran has a very powerful army also. Turkey has a very powerful army. So these three countries together will generate a, th uh, a military power in the region to bring peace, not to use it, just for deterrent uh, uh, reasons. So being united always results in strength and peace but being separated and considering differences as a cause to stay apart always ends in misery and conflict, which, have been, uh, which we have seen in the history. The 20th century is a very good example of that. So these countries being se uh, separately and individually uh, got oppressed and defeated. But now it's time uh, to ally which is an order from the Cor in the Quran actually for the Muslim countries and definitely other Muslim countries will join that but Russia should also include it as a major power in the region that is uh, my message thank you so much Dr. Akhtar Babuna for being on Tactical Talk it's always a pleasure having you thank you very very much it's an honor and a pleasure and my salam to all the Muslim viewers and to great and noble uh, Pakistan nation of the Pakistan, which is a, our brother country, we cannot be separate. Can Istanbul and Ankara be separate? No. So c cannot pa Turkey and Pakistan. As Mr. Erdogan stated, home, away, home. This was Dr. Akhtar Babuna, a Turkish journalist and also a neuroscientist. We were discussing the relationship between Pakistan, Turkey and Iran and their future. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Zahid Khan. Take care and goodbye.